Krista Tippett here. Check, check, check. Yale Brothers, episode 57. It's a rainy day here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This is the Yale Brothers. My name's Chris. And I'm Roger. And uh, we're the Yale Brothers, like I said. So anyway, welcome to episode 57 and welcome to the new year. Oh, yes. New year, new you. And we're, we're actually, uh, new this, me, is the great ex- this is the great experiment now. Yeah, it's a great experiment. We're at uh, separate uh, locations. I'm in my studio and Roger's in his. Yeah. How do I sound? Oh, you sound like you. Oh, that's perfect, dude. I love sounding like Well, it like doesn't me. sound Skype-ish, so, I mean, you have an interface and you're using a proper mic. So oh, my that's God, good. that's really exciting. Is it? That's, re- that's really exciting, man. It's almost as exciting as me going viral on TikTok on Christmas Day. Yeah, so you're still living off that for- faded glory? <laughs> like Moses, when his, when the, when his, uh, the, the glory of the, his countenance, he had to wear the veil. Because his yeah, face yeah. was fading from seeing God's glory. And then, oh, man, I better not let him know my, I'm fading, man. So anyway, oh, no, how are your what, hits now? Did they decline? Well, funny you should ask. This is not, not on mine. I didn't even really, I didn't even have a TikTok then, uh-huh. but I'm at 
thousand views. Seven hundred point seven thousand. How do you like that? Seven. Seven hundred thousand point seven views. Mm. That's pretty respectable. Is it? I don't know. Isn't it, isn't it a bit crazy? And I Taylor don't know just, how uh, it works, man. Taylor just saw me doing it. So probably it was like seven or eight seconds, and then she put it on on Christmas Day. I was saying something about gorgeous, gorgeous girls being in bad moods at Christmas. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden it took hold. I said, oh, it'll be cool if three people see it. So now apparently I, I, for that fleeting moment, I was a darling of TikTok. Well, it done fleeted, man. It did. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, yeah, good for you. You're a TikTok sensation. Good. No, I was a TikTok sensation. See, it's very fleeting. He's a, he's a he's a faded movie star now. You know, it's also faded. What the idea? The idea that you can go to Winston Churchill's house and buy a cigar. Wait, you, they had a little cigar shop in Chartwell. Yeah, man, they had a, and I never knew that uh, that t that tinderbox piped tobacco. I didn't know that his country home was called Chartwell for yes. one thing. Yes, yes, I wasn't smart enough to wasn't smart enough to put that together. Yeah. But according to the National Trust, a little while ago, the headline in the Daily Mail was National Trust opts to extinguish cigar sales at Winston Churchill's Kent country home. That's messed up. After hosting a humidor in its Chartwell shop for more than a decade. That's messed up. It's all he, I don't it's the iconic I don't, thing. It's a stupid yeah, it, national it really, health. <laughs> it was. I it's don't even national, think it's national. It, it, who is? It? I mean, I like national health, but you know what I'm saying. It's something yeah. the the, the uh, anti-tobacco people police. It, it seems like that, but it's uh, sales have been halted due to a lack of demand for the products. Are you kidding? I don't even understand that. How do you not feel like smoking a cigar when you go to Churchy Babe's house? Yeah, <laughs> you want to it's lie in his. Odd, you want to try to sneak, lie down in his tub, in a bubble bath. Yeah, and exactly. Smoke. And get the vibe. Yeah, get the 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 Winston Churchill vibe. Go into his bathroom. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. It says, and even in the Daily Mail article, it says Churchill is thought to have smoked around one hundred and fifty thousand cigars during his lifetime, and the National yeah, Trust lists more them. than me. One, huh? Go ahead. List them as one of the 50 objects to sum up Britain's wartime prime minister. Yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> Oh, man, that's a shame. And they're, they're citing drop of demand, but, I mean, don't you really think it has something to do with national health or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Uh-huh. That, that is really... NHS kind of shenanigans. NHS. NHS. That's funny, man. It's just a, a little odd aside. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Um, yeah, so and I thought I was home free. I'm, I'm going to go ADD on you. Again, did you have any, it on me? Did you have any adverse re uh, reaction to the booster? No. Are you serious? I had a sore arm, man. Betsy did. We had Moderna. I, yeah, we had Moderna too. But I no. thought I was home free until I went to, until I went to bed that night. I woke up in the middle of the night shivering. Ugh. No, not me, man. I just had a sore arm. I'm sorry to hear oh. that, but I'm glad you got boosted. That's good. No, it, I mean, yeah, I'm glad too, man. Yeah, Happy yeah. To be, you know, so we, I guess, suppose we've just been living, loving, and giving. We had a fun night at Lulu's last night. That oh, was, yeah. That was... Off uh, the charts. <laughs> you no, know, it was our first time in the new year there at our home base. Yeah. Pretty good crowd. Yeah, yeah, fun. Not bad. Yeah. We sounded pretty good. I love the automated mixer. Yeah, I got I got it dialed in and saved the settings, man. Yeah, now now all we have to do is turn everything on, plug in, recall our scene, and go. Yeah, that's it. But I mean, at one time uh, we talked about before you weren't we weren't even allowed to touch it. No, uh, that was when back in when it was brand new and shiny, and they they assigned managers to only be able to touch it. But now you know. Uh, so many of those people don't know how to work it or don't want to. There are a yeah. couple that are really good at it and they're not always there. But yeah, but it seems like, like if you got other things to do around there, the last thing you want to do is, be, is go be up the to sound it, guy, do the sound. I know. So they give, they give these, uh, crew shift managers, um, 
probably a brief tutorial about how to use it, and then that's it. Yeah. But now the last couple of times, you just plug it in, turn it on, it sounds fine. Well, it's always been settings. I just never knew how to work the PreSonus Studio Live 16. <laughs> You know, you know what it's very, called. Yeah, very similar uh, to my Yamaha AW2816 with the uh, automated faders and things like that. Just press a button. Oh. Pick the oh, Yale man, Brothers, you. press the button, unmute the thing, and go. Uh, look at you. You know your stuff. Mute, mute, unmute everything but Raj. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. That's, I'll, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? Forgive and me. And it's never loud enough for you, your stuff. It was well, you know, always, always louder. Of course. Yeah. Anyway, what it, are you going to say? It always seems like you're louder. No, I I turn myself down consciously, man. Maybe it's my hearing. Who knows? I try to make I I go out front and hear the balance, and it's not what you hear. Well, I can't very well meander back like into the restaurant to listen while I'm playing. Yes, you could. You could plug my looper in. I could put my old Moog Liberation on. Too bad that's gone. That's a sh no. That's not yeah. Uh, the gear that got away. That's a shame, man. <laughs> Someday it'll come along. What's that? Is that Liza <laughs> Minnelli? That, the, the man that got away. I think it's called. Is it Liza Minnelli? <laughs> but maybe maybe that's not the name of that song. I don't know. Yes, I was trying to be Liza Minnelli. Uh, try harder, man. Oh, don't try too hard. No, I don't have to. Then, try then too you'd hard. be you'd be some kind of drag guy. Try not to try. Who was, too hard. who was the big drag guy that used to do Liza and Ju especially or Judy? Oh God! Remember that guy's name? Is it someone Bailey? I think so. And we don't know. I know it's not Philip Bailey. That's for sure. <laughs> no, I, but, like singing "Easy Lover" and yeah, drag. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, and I not Steve either. Bailey, the bass player, either. I don't think so either. No. Anyway. Oh, by the way, why did we listen to it? The foot of the show, the, the the foot, the top of the show. There was a song called "Come Alone." Jim Bailey. Oh, Jim Bailey. Yeah. Jim Jim Bailey. Yeah, I remember that name. He died. Yeah. Well, he apparently, died, it was he died pretty in good. Twenty fifteen. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Anyway, I'm as, sorry to. I'm sorry. As I was on your shit. As I was saying. The song we heard in the beginning was an old song recorded live called Come Alone that I wrote. We, we oh, wrote, me, you, and Pascal kind of wrote. I, I just did the lyrics. Come Alone. I was 17 when I wrote it, man. You can tell. <laughs> and and oh. I was dating a, 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 a girl that was younger, as you can tell. Yes, I remember everything in her life, dude. You're yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying that uh, when you hear the lyrics, they're a little bit juvenile. Well, it seems like a little bit, uh, I'll leave that alone, that title alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> well, it's nice Probably a lot of story. that going on back then, too. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Like but... showing up at places by yourself? Oh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're back to that. That's good. Yeah, let's keep it there. That that's really good. Honestly, now, I used to go to places by myself all the time after I broke up with said person. Like you, you'd run down to the Copper Penny or something and eat by yourself. Sure, I loved. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed my com my own company. I like my own company and, too. And I liked. Uh, I, man, I I I think I've mentioned this before. I went to a Springsteen concert by myself. Maybe more than one. No, one maybe. I've been to concerts yeah. by myself. You know. Did someone not show up, or did you intend to go by yourself? Well, I asked somebody to go, and they said no. I said, well, screw that. I'm going. Someone must not really have liked you that much to turn down a spring, free Springsteen well, Maybe they didn't concert. like Springsteen. Mm. It, couldn't, it couldn't possibly be that they didn't like me. They didn't like the cut of your jib. They didn't. This this girl I asked where she lived, she lived in uh by, uh, oh, man. Mount Baldy, you remember that place? Is it of course, Upton? Mount Baldy? What's of the course. name of that? Like around, not Claremont. Around there. Uh, yeah, and, and she didn't want to go with you. She, she that was a that, she was that's older a hell of a drive and prettier. That's by like that forest lawn. It's past that way. way past. So I so I offered to come get her. It's like no, you don't want to do that. It's like yeah, I do. It's like no, no. Okay. Well, you're you're going to drive your party van down there, or was that before the party van? I have my 280Z, dude. 
Oh, it was okay. It was a little later. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, About eighty-four. Is, isn't that crazy? Was was your was that called a Datsun or a Nissan back Dotson, then? Datsun, man. Oh yeah, Datsun. Like Lee Lee Newman's Datsun got stolen in my car. Yeah, that's ridiculous, dude. Yeah. Oh well. Oh, uh, what can you do, man? I got more than I paid for it from the insurance, though. I always loved the way it kind of sounded when you when it was winding up. Yeah, like turbine kind of, or something. Like some kind of yeah, weird. Yeah, exactly. Some winding up sound or something. Oh yeah, it was a nice sound, man. That thing was fast. Now, did, know, Paul or, did Paul have a two eighty or did Paul have a two eighty or two forty? I think he had a two sixty. Oh, I see. I see. That's yeah. interesting. It was four speed. I was always wishing we had. I had an overdrive, but no. No, that's a nice ass car, anyway. It was dude. Fun, man. It was. Yeah. And and now, um, I have to make an apology to you. Oh boy. I wondered why the hell you were reading, The Invisible Man. Yeah. I'm thinking, why the hell? We saw the old movie. Not called with, the. It's called Invisible Man. I I was I was um ignorant and I did not know what you were talking about. You were reading the Harlan Ellison book. Yes, I'm here to enlighten you and and everyone within the sound of my voice. Well, Just how kidding. is it? You finished with that book? Oh, it's great. No, I'm about ha- 300 pages in. Oh, give me an idea what it's about. Oh, it's a guy that got, got kicked out of his school for, speak, for something that happened to him beyond his control. And then oh. he moves to New York City and all kinds of stuff goes on. But, you know, just kind of, he's invisible. Not invisible no, yeah. physically, but, you know. Was there racism involved in this Oh, book? yeah, for sure. Yes, indeed. So, so feeling uh, marginalized and not seen? Yeah, kind of, and then then he some some things happen to him that that are very interesting along the oh, way. I, I mean, w- just very kind of almost fanciful and good writing, man. Oh, I'm sure. I have no doubt. I, I don't know why I thought you were reading that old Saw, or the, the oh. Invisible Man. <laughs> Isn't that H. G. Uh, H. G. Wells? I think so, but I remember Claude Rains, and there was a, there was a remake that I had no interest in, but I think I went to go see it. Who wrote that? H. G. Wells? I think so. Hmm. We should. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Doesn't that sound like it? I'm checking. I'm. I gotta be. It's gotta be, man. I'll. Uh, I'll beat you to it. No, you won't. Um, My Vivaldi browser here. Let's see. Uh, okay. H. G. H. G. Wells, Wells. Of course, man. It, so, it appeared in serialized in Pearson's Weekly in 1897, and then was published as a novel the same, same year. year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's look up. Let me give a synopsis of Invisible Man. Yeah, that's good. That's interesting. I was, I, I'm I really, not doing it justice. Yeah, I wondered why you'd be you'd be revisiting that old book. No, there would be no reason. Invisible Man is a novel by Ralph Ellison, published by Random House in 1952. Well, why did I say Harlan Ellison? I don't know why you said that. Okay, my bad. Don't interrupt me again. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Invisible Man is a novel by Ralph Ellison, published by Random House in 1952. It addresses many of the social and intellectual issues faced by African Americans in the early 20th century, including black nationalism, the relationship between black identity and Marxism, and the reformist racial policies of Booker T. Washington, as well as issues of individuality and personal identity. Wow. It's a good book, man. Really good long? book. Yeah. It's a it's That's fun what? read, though. You get lost in it. Great writing. Great writing. I'd like to have a look. Well, I'd like to have a look. I, um, I, I nipped this one out of one of those little free libraries. That's cool. I always pass one on the way to Wesley's. I put books I, back I, in, too. I sidle up along and look. Me, too. It doesn't seem... Sometimes there's nothing interesting, so I just haul ass out. No, no, I don't me, too. Ass, I just leave. Um, you can have Harlan this Ellen, one. Harlan Ellison was at a, uh, wrote about New Wave. And speculative fiction and all that. Oh boy! Well, I didn't catch uh, it when you said it, so yeah, me either. I guess uh, should, I'll forgive you. That's okay. I forgive myself. Do you? You yes, got to start with forgiving yourself, man. Self, hey, man. Self care is not selfish. It isn't. That's why you wrote that song, "Come Alone." It's all about self care. Yeah, listen to you, man. Uh, you sure it's not selfish sometimes? 
Yeah, probably. <laughs> it depends on what kind of self-care you're lavishing upon yourself. Yeah. Hey, self. I have this little bullet point. Why does self always point. make you feel selfish? I don't know. You say self. Self. That was our band teacher oh, I knew you were in Hollywood say High. That. Sarah Self. Yes. <laughs> Sarah Self-Care. We pissed her off so many times. I know we did. I know yeah. we did. We pissed her off. That Hard to keep I'll, that I'll, bunch I'll, together. Yeah, I mean, band, like marching band people were kind of misfits. Especially us at the Hollywood High Sheiks. Yeah, exactly. Hey, did um, Owner of a Lonely Heart blow your mind when you first heard it? Yeah. I was talking to Brenda about it. That little the Trevor Horn stabbing sound. That sample, that sounds, the, the first time something like that was used, really. Or orchestral hits or something. Was he? I, in, I don't know. Was he involved in John Parr's stuff, too? I don't know. I don't That's know either. Interesting. That would be interesting to look at. I don't at. know that. But it reminded me of that kind of f- f- cartoony Flintstones horn sounds or something. The way it was EQ'd or something. And that echoey oh, drums, yeah. the breaks and all that. Yeah. That's a, that's crazy, man. From the Flintstone but, song or something. The same yeah, way it like, sounds production-wise. That's exactly what I was talking about. Uh, man, you're reading some heavy stuff. I'm reading yeah, not some. Really, yeah. Not really, yeah. man. Well, I'm I'm midway through Philip Norman's Paul McCartney, A Life. That's a good one. I didn't realize when I started that it was like 800 pages. Yeah, well, I know. I read it. <laughs> but I'm also tandeming that with tandeming. Is that a word? Yeah. And what I watch the first part of Get Back. Oh, yeah. That, that uh, it's on Disney Plus. Yes, we all know that. Is it on Disney Plus? Yes. Yeah. And then some sometimes switching over to the Disney, ch- I mean the Beatles channel on XM. And I told you I like the um, the Rick Rubin and Paul McCartney thing on Hulu too, which is awesome. Oh, I'll have to look that up. It's really cool. Um, I miss but, John. So, kind of. Uh, we're not talking about John. Oh, who we're are we talking? About, oh, talking about boy. Paul. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a difference between me and you. Yeah, I like Paul. Like, I like John I, better. I know, but you like. Lo- I know you do, and I think there's a correlation of the way our personalities are. Oh, really? Yes, I think so. Wow. I mean, I'm not trying to. Are make- you saying that you're Paul McCartney? Oh hell no! Paul McCartney wishes he was me. Oh yeah, there you go. That's more like it. <laughs> Come on, dude. Yeah, of course. He wishes he was young and pretty like you. <laughs> <laughs> He's letting him his 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 hair like naturally look a little like it's going gray now. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. He, he's easing up on up. the okay. old shoe polish. But it's funny <laughs> looking at the um the get back. Yeah. Um, there's some correlations of people like Neil Aspinall. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. It was the Apple head of Apple. Oh, and I call him an Apple head. It's a guy named. It's funny that the company is called Apple C O R P S. Yeah. Mal but Evans. Mal Evans, the de facto, his de facto roadie saw him. Although it's interesting. And what a name for the guy who directed um <laughs> Let It Be. Michael Lindsay Hogg. Yeah. I kept looking at him and he had an interesting way of talking. You told me before they sounded like Jack Parr. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. You said didn't he the way he talked sound like someone Dick not Cabot. Jack Parr? Dick Cavett. That's right. You sound just but, like Dick Cavett. Amazing. But then you, like, when you talk to him, more, then I looked him up, and he's rumored to be Orson Welles' son. Yeah, you said that. He does kind of have the body style. And probably the same way of ta- that, that same way of talking, too, man. Oh, yeah, maybe. So you we, know what you I mean? Know, we, was, we hung out with Orson Welles, so we should know. Yeah, we should know. But yeah. but what we, what we hear is... Um, what I looked, I looked this up too. It's it's not really verified. But you know, of course, now I can't find it. It's unbelievable, dude. Ver- well, no, I mean you're the one uh, that said that. So, oh, so, no, so yeah. don't you remember they poked fun at that name? In in this is Spinal Tap. No, did they? Did Sir they? Den- funny. Sir Dennis Eaton Hogg. Are you serious? Sir Dennis E T O N slash Hog H O G G. Oh, that's funny. Now, and if he was like, if if that guy was the boss, yeah, he would be Boss Hog. Oh my God! 
goodness. That's all I got. Oh boy, that was that's pretty all I corny. Got. But, I mean, he, the guy seemed that he did seem to have the same body style. I, I saw Citizen Kane after that, just to, so, by, out of curiosity. Oh boy, it's hard. It's hard to believe they. I mean, I'm not taking away from it, but that's cited as one of the. Some people say it's the best movie ever made. Yeah, what do you think? But not so. I'm much. not the judge of that. Very not interesting. So much. Kind of scene set up and shots and all that. Interesting. Eaton Crow. Um, then the same night I saw Being the Ricardos. Same night. <laughs> yeah. How many movies do you watch, man? Not. We would just. It was just a binge night. Oh my gosh. And, uh, I recommend a movie called Bel- Belfast. Also, we I don't saw know that. that one. But well. that's um. Michael Lindsay Hogg. It's Dennis Eaton Hogg. There's a lot of people eat, eat, eating hogs. Yeah, a lot of people eat crow, too. Uh, I hear you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to eat crow. I know this is an awfully short uh, session. You're always, no matter, to, you're always the no. one. You're always the one leaving. <laughs> That's okay. I got to go, too, man. But I'm very excited. I'd rather be looking at your beautiful face. Yeah, I'm sure. Likewise, I'm so sure. But Smelling, uh, your, smelling your bad breath. But this is very interesting. I'm a very clean person, here. homie. One day Very I'll be able clean. to um, hear your feed coming back to me. But yeah, well, it's it's something probably very in my simple. headphones. Sim- it is, but I mean, the only thing the only thing that does it is Skype. It won't it won't feed back into my headphones. Not in the Skype settings. I'm, I've tried. I'm, I'll try to figure it out. Hmm. But something eh. easy. You can yeah. bring it over. Bring the laptop over with your interface, or I can come up there and try to help you. Well, that's a very kind offer. Is it though? It's yeah, it's for I, the good I, of the show. It's for, it's for the okay. <laughs> All right, man. Well, this is this has been the grand experiment, oh. and I'm sorry to confuse Ralph Ellison for Harlan Ellison. And well, I'm sure they things, they both forgive you. One's I'm sorry are they both for dead. A deal of things. Are they both dead or is one alive? Um, I know Ralph's gone. Harlan Ellison's gone too, man. Okay, well then I'm sure there. It doesn't matter what you say. <laughs> somehow, don't speak somehow ill of the does. dead. Don't speak ill no, of I'm the not, dead. I'm, don't I'm confuse the dead the people. Dead. I'm confusing dead don't guys. Don't confuse dead identities. No, exactly. Well, well, listen, my don't man. Don't confuse I've got two to, souls that are con- you know are not the same soul. I <laughs> okay. On, thank man. you very much for that. I'll have to live with that crushing guilt. I think you'd be all right, man, because they don't care. I assure you. I, I assure you. I even if, li- you. even if they were living, I'm sure they wouldn't care. So you know why? They don't know who the hell you are. Exactly. I'm I'm the guy. I'm the guy Paul McCartney wishes he was. Hey, check it out. Don't you know who I am? No, but I know no, what I love you that are. Show. Ridiculous. That's perfect. I know what you are. I've been called better by worse. Yeah, that's the best. That's the best. Um, all right, man. I got to go. All right. One of my cats is coming up here. She wants me, so I got to go. Hey, yeah, I got to go find nothing to do. I'm going to go look around for nothing to do today. It's raining and cold. I'll potter right. around the house. All right. Maybe well, play. I'm, I got about, happy to be here. Thanks. I got about, let's see, I have four, three acoustics and one electric setup and a bass within easy reach. Will I reach? Um, will I reach for him though? Probably not. But here, you, you must not have heard me say I have to go. Do you? Yes. All right. Well, good luck. And uh, this is the Yale Brothers. Uh, you can find us on YaleBrothers at Gmail dot com. And I'm happy to be back. And thank you, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, Chris. Happy, happy. Uh, I know it's late, late in the the month, but Happy New Year. We haven't talked to you guys since last year, I don't think. So, I may. Uh, May you guys have lots of good grace and love and uh, rock and roll. You still there, man? What the hell? Yeah, but I, I seriously got to go. I'll talk to you later. It's fine. I, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Bye.